So 7.4, we're going to be adding and subtracting polynomials. So our favorite, we're going to be adding fractions. So when we add or subtract fractions, we need like denominators. This is a must. We have to have a common denominator. So if we were adding two fractions, let's say I had 5 over 2 plus 1 over 2. How would I add these together? I would add the numerators together, so that would give me 6 over 2. And the denominator stays the same. It's the same idea when subtracting. So let's add an example one. So we already have a common denominator, so we just add the numerators. 10 over 4x. The denominator stays the same. How could I simplify this? I would divide the top and the bottom by 2. So that would give me 5 over 2x. Let's look at B. So B, we are subtracting. So same thing, subtract the numerators. Are these like terms on top? No. no. So how would I write it? Just 2x minus 5. We can't combine them because they're not like terms, so we just leave it as 2x minus 5. And what's on the bottom? X plus 6. Perfect. Could I simplify this? Can I factor the top? No. So we just leave it. Simplify if you can. So if you have a GCF that you can factor out on top or if the top factors, you would want to factor it and see if you get anything to cancel out just like we did in the last section. But here it doesn't factor. All right, let's do a couple more. Let's look at number one. So we subtract the numerators. We get 3 over 12x. Can I simplify this? How? Divide the top and the bottom by 3. So it would be 1 over 4x. Let's do 2. Add the numerators. We get 3 over what? 3x squared. Can this be simplified? How? Awesome. We divide the top and the bottom by 3, and that would give us 1 over x squared. All right, for number 3 subtract the numerators. What's 4x minus x? 3x. Awesome. So 3x over x minus 2. And for 4, add the numerators. So we get 2x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1 because our denominator stays the same. Do you think this could be simplified? Yeah. How? I'm going to take out the GCF on top. So I'm going to take out the 2. So I'm dividing these both by 2 on top. What am I left with? X squared plus 1 over what? X squared plus 1. So what happens now? Awesome. Since these are the same, just like we did in 7.3, they cancel. So we're left with 2. What happens if I cancel them both out? I got to say x squared plus 1 does not equal 0. Whatever we crossed out, you got to set it not equal to 0. So we would solve here. Subtract 1 on both sides. x squared does not equal negative 1. What do I do next? Square root both sides. Can I take the square root of negative 1? No. So what do you think happens? But I can't take the square root of negative 1 because that would give me an imaginary number. So if this is imaginary, then it would just be nothing. Imaginary, so you don't need to put it in your answer. So our answer would just be 2. You'd only have to worry about it if it was a real number. So since it's imaginary, we don't write it in our answer. 
right, so now we're going to do some examples where we're adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. If we have unlike denominators, we have to make them like. So you can always find a common denominator of two rational expressions by multiplying the denominators as shown above. However, when you use the least common denominator, which is the least common multiple of the denominators, simplifying your answer may take fewer steps. So you can always just multiply each fraction by the other denominator. So in my first fraction, I would have to multiply the top and the bottom by D because that's what my second denominator is. In the second fraction, I would have to multiply the top and the bottom by C. That way my denominators are the same, C times D. So you multiply it by what's missing. So another way we could do it is to multiply by the least common denominator, which will make simplifying it easier. So let's look at example two. It says find the least common multiple of 4x squared minus 16 and 6x squared minus 24x plus 24. So to find the least common multiple, we want to factor it out first. We want to find all the factors. So step one is to factor. How would I factor out 4x squared minus 16? It is the difference of squares, but before I factor the difference of squares, I want to take out the GCF. Always start, if you have a GCF, take your GCF out first. So we take out a 4, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. Can I factor this more? Yeah. How? Difference of, Difference of squares now. So what are two factors of 4? 2 and 2. So what, are just, what does it factor into? x plus 2 and x minus 2. Awesome. This is, mm -hmm. We keep the... GCF that we took out outside. So that was the difference of squares. Let's look at the second one here. How would I factor 6x squared minus 24x plus 24? Take out the GCF first. So that would be 6. So that 6 just goes to the outside. I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. What are two factors of 4 that add to negative 4? Negative 2 and negative 2. So this is 6 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. So now to find our least common multiple... We got to know what all of our factors is. So I'm going to break down 4 and 6 also. What are two factors of 4? Mm -hmm. 2 and 2. And what are two factors of 6? 3 times 2. So we need everything from each one. But if something repeats, we don't write it twice. So I have 2, 2, x plus 2, and x minus 2. So that's what I'm going to start with. 2 times 2, times x plus 2, times x minus 2. But if something repeats, I don't write it again. So what from this group of factors here do I already have listed here? 2 and x minus 2. I only have one x minus 2 here, so I can only cross out one of them. So everything else that I didn't list also has to be included in my factors. So I have 3 and x minus 2. Yeah, you need like all of your factors from the first one. And then from the second group, you don't want to list anything that's already listed unless you have like two of them because then you need at least two of them. So then, mm -hmm. an x minus 2. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. yeah. So if we had another x minus 2 in the first, then they would both cancel out. So now I'm just going to multiply where I can. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. And then I'm going to leave this as x plus 2. 
and then I'm going to write it as x minus 2 squared, just to simplify, because we have two of the same, so I can write it as squared. So this would be my least common multiple. So in example three, we're going to apply what we just did by finding the least common multiple first, and then we're going to add them together. So let's start by finding our factors of 9x squared. So listing out all of our factors here. Well, what are two factors of 9? 3 times 3. And factors of x? x and x. Now with my second denominator, how would I find the factors? Or how would I, yeah, how would I factor it? Take out the GCF, which is? 3x. What am I left with when I take out a 3x? x plus 1. All right, so for my least common denominator, so it's the same thing as finding our least common multiple. It's just in the denominator now. We start by listing out all of our factors of the first one. So we have 3 times 3 times x times x. Now that 3 overlaps with one of the 3, so I don't need to write it. And the x overlaps with one of the x's, so I don't need to write that one. So what else do I need to include in my least common multiple? x plus 1. So now I can multiply all this together because this will give us our new denominator. So we have 9x squared times x plus 1. So this is going to be our denominator. So we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by what's missing to get our denominator to be this. So we multiply by what's missing. Multiply by the missing factors, we'll say. So my first denominator has 3 times 3 times x times x. So from my list of my least common denominators here, what's missing from this that I have here? x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom here by x plus 1. Now the bottom, multiplying it by x plus 1 gives us our denominator that we already have, so we really don't multiply that out. It's just helping us to multiply the top. Do the same thing with the right side here. What am I missing from my group of denominators here, my group of factors? What am I missing that I have here? So I have a 3. I have an x. And I have an x plus 1. So what am I missing? 3 and x. So I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3x. So we multiply the tops. We're just adding our numerators together now. So we have 7 times x plus 1 plus x times 3x over our denominator, which we already said was the least common denominator that we made here. So 9x squared times x plus 1. We're going to simplify the top now. How would I simplify the top? Perfect. We just got to distribute and multiply. So this would be 7x plus 7 plus... 3x squared over 9x squared times x plus 1. And then I'm just going to rewrite this in standard form, so I'm reordering the top. So I have 3x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 9x squared times x plus 1. So this would be our answer. So the first step is to find the least common multiple or the least common denominator, which is the same thing. So that would be our denominator. 
Then we have to multiply by the missing factors. So step two is multiply by the missing factors. Step three is to add together. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just subtracting, but we're doing the same. So we want to find our least common denominator first. So what are our factors of 2x minus 2? How would I factor this? Take out the GCF, which would be 2. What am I left with? x minus 1, perfect, because we divided 2 from both of these. And that's as much as we can factor it there. Now let's factor the second one here. What are two factors of 3 that add to negative 4? Negative 3 and negative 1. Perfect. So this would factor into x minus 3 and x minus 1. So for our denominator... We start by listing everything in the first one. So I have 2 and x minus 1. What else do I need to include for my least common denominator? x minus 3. Do I also need to write the x minus 1? So I have an x minus 1 here, but it's already listed here. So that's my pair, so I don't need to write the second one. Yeah, even though, like, 2 is just a separate factor. Like, we're multiplying it, so it's a different factor. So because I already have it listed, I don't need to rewrite it from the second group. So this is our denominator. I'm going to have whatever over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So the next step is to multiply by what's missing. So from my first group of factors, I have 2 and x minus 1. From my total group of factors, I have 2, x minus 1, and x minus 3. So what's missing from this denominator here? x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 3. Technically, we're also multiplying the bottom too, but that already we already multiplied the bottom and it gave us that denominator. So we don't even need to do that. We're just multiplying the tops together here. So on top, how would I multiply those two together? What would I need to do to multiply them together? Foil. So we have to foil. I'm going to write it out here so we can see it. So I have x minus 3 times x plus 2. So we multiply the first, we get x squared. The outers would be plus 2x. The inners, minus 3x. And then the last would be minus 6. So we're going to come back and combine our like terms in a second. Let's go to the second, fac second fraction now. So my denominator is 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. What am I missing from what I already have listed here? 2. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. I don't need to worry about the bottom. I'm just going to multiply the top together. When subtracting, you just have to be careful because I have a minus there. So what do you think I have to do with the minus? Yeah, i got to distribute it. So I'm going to change all the signs. So this is going to turn into positive 2x plus 1, and then I need to distribute that too. They both turn positive. So we had to distribute the minus. If it's a minus in the middle, you want to distribute that to everything after. And then we got to distribute the 2 that we were missing. So this would be plus 4x plus 2. What do you think I need to do next? Combine like terms. So I start with x squared. What would come next on top? What's 2x minus 3x plus 4x? 
so plus 3x. And then what would negative 6 plus 2 be? Negative 4 over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Last step is we have to make sure we can't simplify any more, so we have to check the top and see if we can factor. Do I have two factors of negative 4 that add to 3? 4 and negative 1. So the top factors into x plus 4 and x minus 1. So 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3 on the bottom. What happens now? The x minus 1's cancel. So then I just have x plus 4 over 2 times x minus 3 on top, on the bottom. And then we would say x minus 1 does not equal 0. So what does x not equal? 1. So we would just add 1 to both sides. So looking at number five, again, we want to find the least common multiple. So I'm going to write my factors of each one. So 5x to the third power, what would my factors here be if I listed them all out? Five, and what else? What else am I multiplying to that five? X. How many x's? Three. Three. So five times x times x times x. These are all of my factors listed out for the first one. Now for my second term here, I got 10x squared minus 15x. How could I factor this? Take out the GCF. What's the GCF? 5x. So if I take out a 5x, what am I left with? 2x minus 3. Perfect. So for our least common multiple, we start by listing out all of our factors of the first one. So I have 5x, x, x. Now if I have any pairs, I don't need to rewrite that. So I have 5 that overlaps with a 5 and x that overla overlaps with an x. So I don't need to write the 5 and the x for the second one. So it's only from the second group. If you have something that's already listed, you don't have to write it. So that 5 paired up with this one, that x paired up with this x. What else do I need to include for my least common multiple? The 2x minus 3. So 2x minus 3 did not have a pair, so I have to list that one. So when we simplify all this together, we get 5x cubed times 2x minus 3. All right, let's look at number six. Bless you. So what are my factors of 4x? 4 times x. And what are my factors of 7? Seven? 7. So I list everything from the first one. So I have 4x. Do I have anything that overlaps here? Nope. So just 4x times 7. So my least common denominator would be what? 4x times 7. Twenty-eight x So now we multiply by what's missing. So if in the denominator here I have 4x, so what's missing? 7. So I multiply the top and the bottom by 7. So I really only care about the top. Let's do the same thing with our fraction on the right. I have 7 in my denominator, so what's missing? 4x. So I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4x. So when I simplify here, I'm going to multiply. So 7 times 3 would be? 21 minus 1 times 4x. 4x. And what did I say my denominator was? 
28x. All right, so we start by finding our least common denominator. So what are my factors of 3x squared? Let's list them all out. 3 times x times x. What are my factors of 9x squared minus 12? What do we do first to factor? Take out the GCF, which is 3, and we're left with x squared minus 4. How do I factor x squared minus 4? 3x squared minus 4. Can I factor 3x squared minus 4? No. Because 3 is not a perfect square. So my factors here are just 3 and 3x squared minus 4. All right, so we start by listing all of the first ones. So 3 times x times x. If anything overlaps, we don't repeat it. So do I have anything that overlaps? The 3. So since it's already there, we don't need to rewrite it. So what else do I need to include in my least common denominator? 3x squared minus 4. So my denominator is going to be 3x squared times 3x squared minus 4. You don't have to distribute it back out. I would say leave it factored already. What do I do next? Multiply by what's missing. So in my first denominator, I have 3x squared. So what's missing? 3x squared minus 4. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3x squared minus 4. So on the top here, I have 3x squared minus 4 times 1. We would distribute the 1, but that's just 3x squared minus 4. Let's do the right side. we got to multiply by what's missing. So my factors here are 3 and 3x squared minus 4. So what am I missing? So I have 3 and 3x squared minus 4 x squared. So I multiply the top and the bottom by x squared. Because I have my factors 3 and 3x squared minus 4. So 3 and 3x squared minus 4 are already accounted for. What's missing are the two x's. So x squared. So we're going to multiply the top together. What is x times x squared? x cubed. So this would be plus x cubed. And then my denominator is my least common denominator that I already found. So this would be 3x squared times 3x squared minus 4. On the top, I'm just going to rewrite it in standard form. So this would be x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 over 3x squared times 3x squared minus 4.